Today we're going to calibrate and print with Linear Advance for mega speed. Linear Advance is a feature built into Marlin firmware. Let's very briefly try to explain why you would need Linear Advance. Most 3D printers have four axes, X, Y, Z, and then the extruder. For X, Y, and Z, these are in fact linear. Unless you've got sloppy construction, if you ask it to go 50 this way and then 50 back, it's gonna end up in the same place. It's entirely predictable and entirely accurate. The extruder, however, is just not that simple. So we extrude 20 millimeters of plastic. It's gonna take time for the plastic to move into the nozzle and enough pressure to build up before anything comes out. Let's say we now retract that same 20 millimeters of plastic. Even though it's been sucked back in above the hot end, it's still gonna continue to ooze out. So as you can see, it's very complicated and we need some advanced mathematics to calculate everything accurately. And that's where a linear advance comes in. This accurate calculation of the pressure in the nozzle should allow the printer to be much more capable. To put it simply, it should allow a vast increase in speed for no reduction in quality. Now it had been disabled in the Prusia firmware for a while where bugs were ironed out, but the latest release has enabled it again. Just by flashing the latest firmware, your printer will be capable of printing with linear advance, but there's more to it than that. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to calibrate, set up, and tune for linear advance in four steps. Now to do this, I'm gonna be referencing community pages on the internet, specifically one on Matt's Hub. The first two steps in this process are for calibrating our extruder, and they're universally useful for any printer. So useful, in fact, that people have been using these steps to calibrate their extruder and improve their print quality for a long time. Check out this page from my old solid doodle buddy, Ian Johnson, which was published in 2012. Anyways, let's get right into it by doing our first of our extruder calibrations, and that is calibrating how much filament is going into the hot end. We're gonna start by plugging in our printer because we need to do this tethered, and I'll be using Simplify 3D. After that, we're gonna do two markings on the filament, 20 mil above and 120 millimeters above. This gives a spacing, of course, of 100 millimeters. Back in Simplify 3D, it's time to choose our COM port and then connect to the printer. When we've done this successfully, we're gonna come over and turn on the extruder because our first thing we need to do is to extrude that marked plastic. Now it's very important to do exactly 100 millimeters and to do it at a slow speed. A speed of 100 is perfect for this. When you've set those two parameters, you can hit the extrude button. Now the plastic is very slowly gonna go into the extruder and after that process is done, it's time to measure. If your printer is spot on, you should have exactly 20 millimeters left, but I in fact had 19 millimeters. So we know how much our extruder is off, so next we need to cover storing it in the firmware so the change is persistent. To start off this process, we're gonna to switch to the communication tab and type in the command M503. This will retrieve all of the values stored on the EEPROM in the firmware, and what you need to do is scroll up and find the line that says M92. After that, it'll have the X, Y, Z, and extruder values, the default here being 280. Now we open the calculator, we put in that 280, we divide it by how much we measured, which in my case was 99. We times it by how much we wanted, which was 100. And that gives me a number of 282.82, which I'm gonna round up to 283. We now need to use the G code to store this value in the printer. So we input our new E steps with M92E and then the number. In my case, that was M92E283. Hit enter and the settings are now stored inside the printer. They're not permanent, however, until we do an M500 and hit send, and then they will be saved. Just to make sure they're permanent, we'll recall our M503 command, and then scroll up, and we should be able to see our new value stored. This should remain after a reset. So that's step one complete. Time to move on to step two. You might have noticed in your slicing software, there's a little box called extrusion multiplier. Well, this is the next thing we need to calibrate, and to do so, we need a set of vernier calipers. No, not these ones. These are worth $14. Here I have a $100 set. What does the extra money buy me? An extra decimal place. You will need a set capable of two decimal places to be able to do this effectively. For this next part, I'm using a calibration cube. You can model your own or easily find one on Thingiverse. We need to make some temporary changes to our print settings, and that includes getting rid of all of the top and bottom solid layers and putting our outline perimeter shells down to one and also putting the infill to zero. After this, we can hit preview and we can see we have a completely hollow cube. Now this should be a pretty quick print and it won't take long to complete. So we've got our lovely little hollow cube. Time to use our vernier calipers just to see how accurate it is. Now it's important to measure not just one side but to measure all four sides. 
My range of values is 0.50 to 0.51, but typically more like 0.51. So that's the value I'm gonna go with. Time to crunch some maths again. We take our current extruded multiplier, which was 0.98, we divide it by how much we measured, 0.51, and then we times it by what we had in the manual box, which is 0.54. That gives me a new extrusion multiplier of 0.86, which I'm gonna enter in the box and then save. Time to slice the file again and then get ready to print. Fortunately, once again, this is gonna be a very fast print and you won't have to wait long to test if you're accurate. If our measurement and our maths are correct, this next one should be perfect. Isn't it so satisfying when things work out? You can see here we're measuring 0.45, which was our target value on pretty much all of the sides. Hopefully yours ends up the same and you don't need to make any minor adjustments. That's two steps down and we're doing really well. Time to get onto the specific things for linear advance. Linear advance introduces a new variable called the K value. We integrate this into the slicing process by using an M900 command in our starting G code. Time for a really quick print that'll tell us what value to insert. If you haven't already, follow the link in the description to Matt's Hub and scroll down and find the link for the K factor test. This will download a file that which when you drag into Simplify 3D, will automatically switch into G code and then you print it on your printer. You'll notice it's pretty crazy. It speeds up dramatically in the beginning of each line and then zigzags back and forth. This is what we're gonna to use to calibrate our K value. So we've got our calibrated zigzag down and it's pretty hard to capture on camera. So you'll need to get up close and personal with it and pay very close attention to work out the best one for you. As you observe your zigzag pattern, you'll notice that some of them are thick and then thin on different sides. What you're looking for is the most even one. And for me, that was K equals 40. Believe it or not, that's step three finished. So step four is setting up the slicing software with the specific parameters needed for linear advance. How are we gonna do this? Well, we're once again gonna to head to the community. To the rescue once more is Facebook user Chris, who previously posted a Simplify 3D profile with Linear Advance enabled. This is a perfect basis, and this is where we paste our M900 value in the starting G-code. Looks like we're ready to go, which means I need a test print. Now this is meant to be all about speed, so I'm gonna bump up the speed dramatically and print something that would traditionally take a really long time. So what am I gonna choose? Well, we recently got a second-hand copy of Mario Kart on Wii, but it didn't come with the steering wheel. So I turned to Thingiverse and I found a copy ready to print. It was a perfect model because I needed two of them and that would allow me to test stringing and things like that as the extruder went back and forth between the two of them. For my first test prints with Linear Advance, I thought I would really crank it up. So I took it from the already fast 6,000 millimeters per minute and put it all the way up to 10,000 millimeters per minute. So I'd have to say it turned out pretty good. I actually ran out of glow in the dark filament right near the top, so you might be able to notice this top bit is bright white compared to the rest having that greenish hue. Now it's pretty hard to capture on camera, but this thing looks pretty good. The layer lines look as good as they would in any other print, and dimensionally it's spot on because the controller fits perfectly. To put linear advance through its paces on such high speed, I did a range of other prints too. Cool, this thing is fast. Perimeters are pretty fast, but when it gets to the infill, especially on long sections, man, it really hammers. This was a functional part that ended up really accurate. This part, however, was for a grip for a project coming up on the channel. Although it's hard to focus this close on two separate objects, the one on the right with a fast speed isn't quite as nice. Although the appeal of printing at 10,000 millimeters per minute was pretty cool, especially compared to the 3,600 speeds I used to do with my old solo doodle, I don't think it's really necessary. It doesn't actually improve the print speed as much as you think because a lot of the time you need quite a long line for it to be able to accelerate for long enough to get up to that peak speed. Yes, it did work as an extreme example, but I think there was a much better middle ground and a much better compromise. Here are my final settings, although I'd encourage you to do your own testing and come up with something that you're happy with. On the speeds tab, I took up the default printing speed from 6,000 millimeters per minute all the way up to 8,000 millimeters per minute. This meant that I needed to lower my first layer speed all the way down to 10% just to help things stick. And obviously the profile I downloaded had a different K value to me, so I changed it from 32 to 40. 
On 8000, the quality is pretty superb, pretty much on par with the original prints I did on the printer. I have to say Linear Advance lived up to expectations. For me, I'm happy with the increase in speed and the minimal trade-off in quality, so I'm going to leave Linear Advance on. If you go through this process and enable Linear Advance, I'd love to know how you go. Please post in the comments below whether you think it's worthwhile and what type of speeds you've ended up with. Well, that's going to wrap it up here. I would like to acknowledge those excellent people in the community who put out guides like this that make it so much easier for everyone else to follow. Also to the generous people who put the time into tweak profiles and then put them publicly available for everyone else on the internet. I'd like to add to that to thank you from me for watching and until next time, happy 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.